What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Dabbling DIYer. So if you've been following our series of the home office build, you'll know that we closed in a room in our house, and at each entrance of the new room, we are putting barn doors. Now, we're going to build two different types of barn doors. Today's barn doors are just your typical sliding barn doors. These are quick, cheap, and simple to build. So you guys come along with me and let's build these barn doors together. All right, for the frame of the barn doors, we are using just your regular white pine. Uh, we're gonna need three of these for each of our frames. Now our barn doors are going to be 82 inches tall by two and a half foot wide because we have a five foot wide section that we wanna put our barn doors on. I just wanted to take one sec and say thank you for everyone who has subscribed. If you like these videos and you have not, please subscribe and like the videos. Thank you. We've got our frame laid on the table and we'll work on pocket hole joining these together. Now we want to join our short boards to our sides because this is end grain and if we put it into the side of our board here, we will be going from end grain into a side. If we were to be going from this side of the board into this board, we would be drilling into end grain and that's not a super secure hole. Now for drilling these pocket holes, it's super simple. Just take you a clamp. If you have one, grab you a chair, pull up beside your workbench. Clamp your board to your table just so it doesn't slide around on you. Get it tight. If you have one of these K3s, slide your clamp into your K3 jig. So that side's done. We're gonna flip the board over, do the other side, and then we're gonna continue down the line and do our other two center supports. I ended up putting a total of six pocket hole joints in each support. So here's our frame. We're going to line everything up based off this corner. I'm going to clamp it to my table. Let's get these pocket hole screws put in and complete this frame. We used one and a quarter inch Craig screws for our pocket holes. That's what's recommended for the three quarter boards. You'll see I put six in each support. And now we are working on getting our center support centered in the middle of the frame. And we will screw it in as well. Now that we have our frame all put together, the next step is to make our cross pieces. All right, so we got a nice fit there. We're gonna do the same thing as we did on the sides. We're gonna drill pocket holes here and here and attach our cross bracing. And then we'll finish our bottom piece and then it's on to our backer board. So we have the barn door frame complete. A lot of you might be wondering, oh, am I gonna have to fill every one of them pocket holes? No, I am not. The way I designed this was that our backer board that we're gonna put on here for strength, as well as to get our thickness for our barn doors, is going to cover this entire back side. All right, so like I said, I'm using shiplap. And what shiplap is, it is tongue and groove. And these are pretty cheap, and I like that they're kind of light. This door probably weighs around 50 or 60 pounds complete, so it's not a super heavy door. So once you get your door laid out, just lay your shiplap up here, interlock them. I like to leave a little gap because I think it adds to the character of the door. 
All right, so I'm using my brad nailer. Like I said, the glue is going to hold this together, but the brad nailer, nailer is going to help hold it together until the glue dries. I am using inch and a quarter brad nails, and I'm also putting them in on an angle a little bit to help. So let's get this first piece in place and get it nailed down. Don't be shy with the glue. Now that we've got glue all over the frame, we're going to lay our shiplap out, get our spacing correct, and then we will nail it down. Now don't worry about those barcode labels on the ends, we do pull those off later. Once we get it nailed down, you will see we completed this door and then we went on to build a second door. And here is what it looks like unfinished. Now we took them out, we sanded them down to 120 grit. And then we took them inside and we started to stain them. Now once we got these doors stained, we waited a couple weeks before we installed the track system. As you can see, the office is complete and all of our framework around the doors is complete. So we use the laser level to get a perfectly level line. We drill all of our holes for the track system and then we mounted our spacers and bolted our track system to that. This wasn't a super difficult job. Uh, it's a little bit harder to do it by yourself. Um, it would be nice if you had a second person. I will say that the laser level really helped speed the process up and we got a perfectly level door. That way the doors did not move on their own due to being unlevel. So once we finished the track system, we went ahead and we drilled our holes to mount our roller guides on the doors. This was a super simple process. And then once we mounted those roller guides, we went ahead and installed the safety hardware. And these are just little safety devices that keep the door from jumping off of the track. You just spin them out, you sit your door on the track, and then you'll see me spinning them back in here to keep the doors from jumping off the track. And other than that, the only other things we did was install a couple of door handles and then some roller guides at the bottom. This is the office complete. And here are a couple pictures of the complete project. Our next video to be uploaded will be that farmhouse desk. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching this episode of the Dabbling DIY. Again, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. We always appreciate you watching.